Hello, everybody. This is Susan Beatty, one of the STEM consultants with West Kentucky Gear Up with the West Kentucky Educational Cooperative. And I just want to take a moment to share with you a follow up on some of the or one of the websites that um, you find on the distance learning document that we shared with you from our group. There's a lot of things on that list and it might be a bit overwhelming to you. So I thought I would just take out one at a time and share my experience with them. So maybe it would be a little less overwhelming for those of you that are looking for something new, looking for something different. Right now you may not be because you're just trying to get things going and get things set up. But later on in a you know a few days or a week or so you may think, oh I think I want to try something a little different and I want to look at some of those sites. And how do you know which one to choose? Well I like to choose ones that I know that people have used before and I can get help from. So I just want to take a few minutes to show you CK12, how to create a class, how to add students, how to find activities, and how to monitor students. It's just kind of a quick way to do it online when you have to work from a distance, when you can't be face-to-face. -face. This is just a good option, I think. So as we... Um, Look at this. If you think about this, if you get the website, you type it in and you look at it, you don't know where to go. So I'm going to show you how you can get over some of those hurdles and use it a little bit more effectively for your students. So again, I'm going to show you how to create an account and you can use your Google email. It makes it a lot easier. Create classes. Invite students by email. And then find some good activities that are online textbooks, and they also have some online workbooks, too, that you can search through and find questions and things like that. And then you can check student progress as well through um, that site. So before I finish, let me get out of this and go to the site itself and show you what it looks like. I'm actually logged in right now, so I'm going to log out, sign out, so you can see what it looks like before you sign in. They make you join. It's free. It doesn't cost anything, but you do have to join and make an account. I signed up with Google because it, you can use your Google email and it doesn't make you uh, create a new password. Or you can use your email if you prefer. Since I already have an account, I'm going to sign in. Sign in with Google. And it takes me directly to my account. And this is your dashboard. This is the very first page that you see. Anytime you want to get back to your dashboard, up here in the left corner there's always a CK12 in green and orange you just click that it takes you right back to this page if you get lost but it you it has a tab for your classes and I'll show you in a minute how to make a class it has a library where you can accumulate things that you find as you search through the site you can add new things to it so you don't have to keep searching it gives you a way to search by subject and you can see there's all kinds of different subjects with this not just science and then it gives you this explorer that shows you all of the different resources they have on their site. And I'm just going to show you one of them, but you can go through and look at any of these that you want and see what, what works for you. So if we go back to the dashboard, we can see that it's going to always give you what you've recently looked at. So if you were looking at something and you want to go back to it, that's where it will be. It shows you what everybody else is looking at, what's popular right now. It shows you practice options for questions. It shows you how videos are embedded. And then it shows you some online simulations that go in with some of the activities that are found in the lessons. So it just kind of gives you an overview on that page. Let me show you how to create a class. So I'm going to go to classes. And you see I've created several practice classes already. I'm going to create a new one just to show you what how to do it. It's very easy. Go over here to the blue circle with the plus and you click create a class and I'm going to call this one practice class six and I'm not going to describe it but I'm going to call it a science class a life science class and we're going to make it um, pink because I like pink and then we're going to look and see that it made that class there and it gives you a code so that if you do have to add a student manually you can use that code to add them. They don't have to have email to be a part of this, but email is just an easy way to do it. So if I click on Practice Class 6, I can see the classes page. You can see that it's empty. I need to add some students to it. I don't have any assignments yet. I don't have any reports yet. I don't have any resources added yet because I haven't done anything yet. But when we do, 
will be able to see those. If you go down here to settings, if you click on that, that's how you can kind of control. You can see your code again. You can see a list of your students. You can add students manually. If you need the link again to your class, which I'll show you in a minute how we're going to use that, there it is again. And then you can just kind of control the settings, whether you're going to allow students to email you or not, whether you're going to allow them to ask you questions on the site or not. All of that stuff is up to you. You can choose how you want to do that. So let's go back to um, our home of our practice class six and let's add a student. So I'm going to click add students there. I'm going to add them by email just because it's easier. I could add without email, but if I do that, I have to create a username and password and get that to them. Sending them an email is much easier. If I click that, it gives me the email already created. Down here at number five, it gives you a code, but it also gives you a link. And all they have to do with that link is click it in their email when they get it from you, and it adds them to your class automatically. So if I click email, it's going to take me directly to my email. I type in all of my student emails that I want to get the message, and I just add one right after another with a semicolon in between, just like you always do. And in the subject, I'm going to say, join my CK12 class. And then I'll hit send. And it's going to send them an email. So once they get that email and they open it, then they click on that email. And it will give them that exact same message that we saw. They click the link and it will automatically join them to practice class six. Now for me to be able to see them, I'm gonna to have to refresh my browser. So if I go up here and refresh the browser, then I can see that I have a new student, Buster B. Beatty joined my class. And as students join, it'll accumulate a list of them on this list right here. All right, and then if I wanna see a list of members that way, then I can see them that way. That's another way that you can add them too. You can go down here to members and it gives you that add students option too. You can see them either way. All right. So then I can, if I, if I want to add a student again, I can just hit that and it will let me add a student. So I'm, I'm, I've got students now, or I've got one student now in my practice class. Now let's add some assignments so that Buster has something to do. Again, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can go up to the what do I want to learn today and type it in and it will let you search for activities as you want. You can search by subject. You can add things to your library and go back to your library and pick from there. You can also explore. This is the one I'm going to show you because I think it's really neat. If you go to explore and you look over here at Flexbooks 2.0, this is a new feature that they have that kind of puts things all in one place and you don't have to do a lot of searching. So it kind of describes what it means, what it is, and what it does, and it allows you, allows you to search. And down at the bottom, it gives you all of the different options they have for their different flex books. And it's like an online textbook and sometimes workbook involved. So what I'm going to do on the science, since I, chose, since I said this was a biology class, I'm going to choose the biology flex book. And you can see that it brings it up and it shows you that it's NGSS aligned. It gives me an overview of all the topics that are in that workbook or in that flex book, and I can look at them that way. I can go through and I can look at genetics and I can see what all the genetics topics are. Cell biology, I can do the same. I can look at, I gotta close that one first. I can look at cell biology and see what all the cell biology topics are, and I can choose the ones that I want. I can do them each individually if I want. Like if I wanted them just to look at pea plants, I could go in and choose that one. Or I can go up here to choose under the heading and click, I can add them to my library. If you want to look at them later, add them to your library. Or if I want to go ahead and assign them to a class, I can do that. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to share them or I'm going to put them on CK12 so that they go into the CK12 platform. That's where I want to see their work. So I'm going to choose that. And I'm going to put them in practice class six. If I wanted them to put them in all my classes, I could do it all at once. And then I can choose which unit that I want. And I said I wanted genetics. And then I can choose which activities within there that I want them to do. What's neat about this is it shows you the, how long it takes. Like this activity, they say, should take a day. 
And we'll look at it here in a minute if we have a chance and see what's in that pea plants activity. You could look, you could have looked at it before you um, assigned it. I think it has a, an article, a set of practice questions, a video embedded, and maybe something else. I'm not sure. But we'll look at it in a second after we assign it. So it gives you a start date and it gives you, you have to put in a due date so students know how long they have. And let's go ahead and do one more. This one will be due Monday, let's say. Okay, I'm just going to give them those two for now. And I'm going to hit assign. And it says we've successfully add, added them to practice class six. So we got that. So now let's go back to practice class six and look at it. See what it looks like. Go to my dashboard, click classes. Go to practice class six. Look at assignments. And I can see those two assignments that I've given to my students. And what they'll see, they'll see something very similar to this screen. It won't look exactly like it because they have student view. But they'll see a, an accumulation of assignments here. It will show them the due date. It will show them that it's been assigned. They click on it, and then they can come over here and click on it, and it will open up the assignment, and they can see what it involves. And they can actually read it. So this one, this pea plant, pea plant one, has a article. It has some diagrams, some, some uh, graphics. It has a video embedded about Gregor Mendel. It has a summary, and then it has some review questions. Now, what you'll notice over here on the side, some of these articles have practice along with them. And if you click that, it gives them some practice questions um, to do, and it tells them they should complete it in about nine minutes. And it tells them they have to get 10 correct to meet their goal. Now, since we're in teacher mode, it's given us the opportunity to preview. I don't think it gives them that. But you can see here the kinds of questions that it gives them. Genetics is the science of heredity. You click it, and it gives them the next question. And it gives them a skill level as they go. So pea plants are naturally self-pollinating. Next. And on and on and on. If it's a question they don't know, they can get a hint. They click over here and get a hint. If it's something they need to work out, they can click on the scratch pad and they can type on it and work, work on it. Let's get one wrong. Let's put in a wrong answer. Um, the ability to um, kill pea plants allowed Mendel to study offspring. Well, obviously, that's wrong. So I'm going to check it and it tells me that it's wrong. All right, then it says mistakes motivate, try again. And it tells me that I'm developing, but I'm not quite there. But it then gives me, it lets me go on to another question. It will eventually bring that question back and give me the opportunity to get it right. And it will keep going until you get 10 out of 10. But what it does is it shows the teacher on the reports page how long it took you to do that. So if it takes you 30 minutes, you know that you didn't get 10 questions right all in order. So you kind of get an idea of how they're doing. So I'm going to hit stop for now. That's going to submit the practice if it was a, an actual student doing it. Okay. So that's what the, the assignment looks like. I'm going to go back and show you one more thing before my time is up. And we're going to look at our class again. And we're going to look at reports. So what this does is it shows us the progress our students are making. All right, so here Buster is in my class. It shows the two assignments that I've assigned him. It doesn't show what he's done because he hasn't done it yet. Buster actually hasn't done it on his account yet, so it doesn't have a score. But it will show you a score, and it will show you how well he did and how long it took and all of that. So that's just a, another option that you can use to keep up with your students. Um, I really liked using this when I used it. I thought it was a good way for students to interact with the material without me if they needed to, um, and they could use their device to do so. Um, they have a lot of good tutorials. CK12 does. They have their own um, help site um, that you can go to and on YouTube, and they will give you lots of information, um, more information than I did. So I hope this helps you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking an interest in your students and trying to make this difficult time a little bit better for them. If you need more help, um, just let me know. Send me an email. Thanks.